Hi, I'm Midge Shoemaker, and this is week 34 of my doing 100 weeks of YouTube videos and focusing on living a healthier and a happier life. So yay for week 34. I made it to week 34. Only like 66 to go, which 66 is a fantastic number. The only downside is this, that I have a tendency to skip weeks, and so it's taking me like almost two years to get to 30. 34 weeks and there are only 52 weeks in a year so <laughs> I'm wondering how many years it's going to take me to actually finish my videos and I was going to try to split up three weeks worth of videos and try to remember what I did for the past three weeks and I'm like I can remember what I did for the past week maybe the past week and a half but I really can't remember what I did for the past three weeks so I really need to do better at making my videos every week um, because yeah I just can't remember what I did all of those days so anyway, I, um, I'm just not going to be able to do that today. So I'm just going to do one week this past week and I might remember some random things from the previous two weeks and that's okay if I do. Um, <clears throat> so this past week has not been the best for me. I don't know what's going on with me. Just struggling to do things, um, emotionally, mentally, physically, just exhausted. Um, on different medications, started taking different medications, stopped taking the medication because I don't like the side effects of the medication. Probably need to take it long enough for my body to adjust to the medication. Just lots of things, just not doing. Anyway, <laughs> so it's kind of been one of those weeks and one of those probably for the past week and a half where I just did not want to do anything. And I have sort of figured out what's going on with me. So I guess I will share a little bit. Um, I don't want to make this video too long because my phone will just tap out on me when I do that. But basically, I I realized um, when I turned in my, my book and I sent some questions to my publisher, she sent me some responses back and I realized that it was going to talk, take a lot more money and a lot more time and um, <clears throat> being a published author is a lot of a lot of work, which I already knew that. Like I, I knew that. I just didn't take into consideration all of the steps as far as marketing goes and how much money goes into doing that and all of promotions and all of those things to put my stuff out there and I haven't been really good at promoting myself and it makes it scares me to put myself out there to promote myself to do ads or to do book signings or to do other things like that um, and then the cost of doing that because you have to pay for the books well I would have to pay for the books up front and then depending on the venue, I might have to pay for the venue. I might have to get certain licenses, things like that. And then it's just a matter of whoever's walking by or comes in, whether they're interested in my book or not. And then, of course, the more books that I have out, the more of an audience that I can get, the more people that would come to a book signing and that would buy. And But it's, it's a lot of work. And then she was talking about doing bookmarks. And I know bookmarks you can sell for like a quarter or you just give them away for free so that people are like, hey, this is you. This is me. Do a bookmark. Um, buy my books, be aware of my books, you know, just another form of advertising. And again, that's another added expense. And so it was kind of freaking me out with finances and all of those things. And, and I think there's still that part of my brain. Um, I don't know if it's an ADHD thing or if it's just a me thing, or maybe it's just everybody thing, but it's not really one that's talked about, but for whatever reason, my brain seems to think that there's a, there's a done point. Like I have hit my done point and I'm done. I don't have to do anymore, or I'm finished with the project, even if I'm not finished with the project. And whenever I hit that point, it's like hitting a brick wall. And I just feel like I can't go beyond that. Um, so <laughs> at this point I keep, feeling like or hoping that like, you know, there's an end point, like, okay, I've got somebody to publish my book, it's being edited, it's going to get published, it'll be out in August. And like, everything's fantastic. Just like, you know, I put my song out there, but without marketing my song, it's not going to go anywhere. And I'm not going to make money off of it. And I'm okay with that. I'm just excited to put it out there. But my book, I actually want to make money off of, I want to build an audience for my, for my books, because it's a whole series. Um, the song was just I mean, sort of a one-time thing. I have other ideas for other songs that I haven't really put out there yet. Um, and I don't expect to make a ton of money off of music. That's not really my direction, my goal, my area of expertise. <laughs> it's just a random side thing. So that's kind of a fun thing, um, which I may or may not do or continue to share. Same with like writing poems and things like that. Um, that I just randomly share with people, but it's not something that I anticipated making money off of. Whereas my books, 
I would anticipate making money off of. So it was a realization. Um, and it, I mean, it's something I knew, like I knew about, I had the general idea that it was going to be a lot of work and that it was going to do stuff, but the actual breakdown and what I was going to do or how I was going to do it hasn't really, I haven't really gotten to that point yet. And now I'm getting closer to that point. And now I'm starting to see there's other options and all these other extra things to do and extra costs involved. And I don't have the money. So then my brain is trying to frantically figure out how to pay for things. And I had to get a crown on my tooth last week. So I'm like, I have to pay for that. So I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how to pay for everything that I want to do in order to be able to promote my book, in order to get money from my book, in order to learn more about writing and things. And so it's just feeling overwhelmed and feeling stressed out and maybe a little disappointed that it's not like I'm done. Like I get to publish the book and then I'm done. That's not it. There's there's a whole bunch more after that. And that's really hard for my for me to to handle, to grasp, because there's, you know, I'm so done with this book. <laughs> I mean, it's a cute book and I hope that people will like it and enjoy it and read it and buy it, but I'm so done with this book. <laughs> like I've rewritten it like four or five times and I know I have to go through at least two more edits of it, two more revisions before it actually gets published, possibly three because I think I get a, a third one where the if there's anything that I have objections to before it gets the final print or something. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's just, it's, and I'm, I want to be done, but it's like, I can't just stop at the brick wall like I do. I have to keep pushing through it. So, um, and then I was at my Al-Anon meeting yesterday and we were talking about stuff and someone mentioned the fight, flight or freeze. And I think someone told me there's another one. There's a fourth one and I don't remember what that is. But um, anyway, I know that I get stuck in that free state a lot where I just, I don't know what to do or where to go. And so I just freeze. I just kind of wait for things to just resolve themselves, which most of the time they don't. I still have to have some kind of action or I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I am ready to make a decision or I am tired of just sitting around and doing nothing. I have to do something. So um, I think when I hit that realization, I just kind of, I shut down because that's what my brain does. And I froze and I was like, how am I going to do this? And then I just kind of got fixated on just how am I going to pay for bookmarks? How am I going to pay for books? How am I going to do book signings? And my book isn't published yet. So <laughs> there's, there's that. There's a writing conference in September that I wanted to, at the writing conference, they usually have a bookstore. And I was just asking my publisher about the possibility of um, putting my book in the bookstore for people to sign. And then she just gave me a whole bunch of other places and options where I could do book signings, which is a good way to promote my books. And she suggested a bookmark if I wanted to. And she pointed out that I would have to buy the books up front and then I could sell them. And then I would get to keep whatever money I made off of the books at the, the bookstore or the, you know, book signing. So I don't even know the process to get into the bookstore, to even have my book at presented at the writing conference. And I don't know if I can even afford to go to the writing conference. I mean, I took the time off of work so I could go to it. Um, so I can take the time off to go to it. I just don't know if I can financially afford to go to it. So mostly because now I had to get a crown on my tooth, which I wasn't expecting to do. And I kind of just don't want to have to do, but um, I didn't think it was a good idea to leave it my tooth the way that it was because I didn't, I mean, the nerve wasn't exposed, so I didn't care that much about it, but I didn't want to get to the point where the nerve was exposed. So there's just all of that. And so unfortunately, I did what I always do and I shut down and that meant that I did not make my videos for three weeks and that's not good. Like my weekly videos, I didn't make for the past three weeks and my uh, daily videos I haven't made for over a week. So that's also not good. So I'm going to just go through my weekly goals and just let you know where I'm at with all of those things and from what I can remember for the past three weeks. And um, anyway, that's that's me and my crazy brain and my emotional state of mind. And I, I do that and I kind of shut down, but I'm kind of to the point where everything is piling up and becoming a bigger and bigger mess. And I just, I, I don't, I don't like feeling so stressed out and overwhelmed and feeling like I have all of this time to do things and I'm just wasting it. So I have just been doing a lot of praying and trying and um, rearranging, taking my medication. I also didn't take my 
ADHD medication on the weekend, which I should take it on the weekend because I would probably be a lot more productive on the weekend if I would actually take my medication. <laughs> but I'm like, I only need it for work. That's, that's a lie. That's an illusion that I put into my brain because I don't like having to take the medication, but I do need it. Plus when I don't take it on the weekend, I think it takes my body kind of shuts down to, to get it out of my system. It's kind of more depressing after I stop taking it because it's a stimulant that makes me more motivated and, and then it's like that I'm missing that stimulant. So it's more obvious that it's not there. So then it's even harder to function when I don't take it. And then I start taking it again. I'm like, yeah, I can function. But I'm like, I've just been doing it for work. And so I probably need to start doing it on the weekends as well, instead of being ornery about it. So um, socially, socially, I did go to the church and I did go to the temple. So I did do that. I did text some of my friends. Um, so I did do that. And I have responded to some Marco Polo videos from my family. Um, I haven't been consistent at it, but I have done it a little bit, um, reached out to a few people. So that's good. Emotionally, I just explained all of that emotionally. I have, for the most part, managed to read my scriptures and meditationals most of the days for the past three weeks. And I have still journaled. I have a journal entry for every single day. Um, I did run out of journals, but I have like reams of like blank paper. Um, it's not lined paper, but it's like printer paper and I have reams of them. So I decided, okay, I don't really have the money to buy journals. So I will just start writing in a ream of paper. So I grabbed a ream of paper and I've been doing that for um, a week and a half or something. But I mean, the last set of journals I bought, I filled them up in like two weeks, it's like 14 to 15 days a piece. And I was like, dang it, it took me like six weeks to fill up three journals. So this way I've got a whole ream of paper and it'll take me a while to fill it up, but there's no lines in it. Um, but that's okay. I don't really care. I'm still journaling in it. The only problem is I haven't been numbering the pages and I'm really hoping that they don't really have a place to put them other than a pile. So I'm really hoping that they don't fall over because I can't always read my handwriting and then they would be all out of order. So I need to find some way to bind it all together at some point, but I have been journaling. So that has been helpful. Um, it's probably one of the few things I've been doing. I'm trying to read my scriptures and meditationals, so trying to spiritually stay connected, but still just, like I said, I got stuck in a free state, and that just meant that not only did I not work on my writing or my books, I just didn't do dishes, I didn't clean my house, I didn't, I just shut down. So just played games after work and just didn't do anything. Plus, I've been taking some blood pressure medication I took for a few days, but they did tell me when I started taking it that it was going to make me really tired for at least a week. And I noticed um, last week when I was taking it that I started to get like really lightheaded at work. I started to get a headache and I was just like, I can't function like this. And so I think that's the blood pressure medication. And then I didn't take it for a few days and then I took it again today and I'm feeling the same way again at work. And I was just like, okay, I know this isn't the ADHD medication because I've been taking it and it hasn't been doing that to me. So I know it's the um, blood pressure medication because they told me it could do that. So, but they said it only takes a week. I just haven't taken it consistently for a week. So I need to convince myself to take it consistently for a week. I hope that I can still figure out how to function in spite of that. And that hopefully after a week it will get better. And if not, I am sending a message to my doctor and going, I am not taking this because this is not working for me. Um, so there's that. Um, so yeah, spiritually, I think, I mean, on the weekends, I just really haven't been praying and writing in my little daily thing to see myself the way that God sees me. But I do it during the week when I have to go to work. I'm like, I have to function and be a nice person. So I have to do it. And then on the weekends, I'm like, I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to do anything, which is not true. I have tons of things to do. I just, you know, I just don't do it because I'm like, oh, I can go to the temple. I can go to church and I get spiritually boosted there. And then I'm like, I just tell myself I don't have to do anything around my house, even though I have a ton of things to do, which would be better if I would do that on the weekends. So I still struggle with that on the weekends. Um, physically, I think a couple weeks ago, I exercised like three days for the week. And then last week, I think I exercised once last week. <laughs> this week, I have not exercised at all. My weight has stayed under 230. So it's been somewhere between 228 and 227 and 229 for the past three weeks. So that's not horrible, but I'm not really losing weight, but at least I'm not gaining weight either. So that is good. Um, like I said, I haven't done my dishes for like two weeks and they're piled up mess. It's insane. <laughs> so yeah. And mentally, like I said, my brain just shut down and it's frozen. So I haven't been doing anything mentally, which would be nice if I could 
jump past that hurdle. Um, financially, I, I was trying to talk to my bishop and to the church to see if they could help with my tooth. And they came back with it. I could put half of it on my credit card, which I'm not thrilled about, but I did because I had to get my crown on my tooth. And then they're like, and then they want me to pay another, the other, for the other half. So it's like I could pay half when I got the, the temporary and I have to come up with the other half for when I get the permanent. And so they're going to pay half of the second half. So I basically I'll end up paying three quarters of the tooth. Um, and then they'll pay for a quarter of the tooth, um, which would, would be nice that they'll help pay for part of it anyway. Um, but then I'm just kind of stressing about how I'm going to do that and then running out of food. And then they said I could get food orders and then just playing phone tag with like ways to get food. So I'm like, okay, I would just rather they pay for my tooth. <laughs> I will just go buy food, especially since I know that the food that they offer, even though it's, it's free, it's fantastic. There's a lot of things, um, that I can't eat. Um, and there's a lot of things that I buy specifically because I can't eat that. Like I buy almond milk and I can't get almond milk from them from, so I, that's just not an option or like coconut oil, which I, again, can't get there or, um, so there's just some specific things that I, I need, or like the just egg, my egg substitute that I use for, for my food. Like I, I can't get those from them. It's not food that they offer. So I still have to go buy other things. I just don't have to spend as much money on it. So, um, and they do have fresh fruits and vegetables that I can get, and they do have meat and proteins and things like that, that I can get. So there are things that I, I can get. And then there's some things that I just am very picky about that I don't want to get from them because I know what they have like brands of stuff that I'm like, mm, don't like that stuff. So, um, again, I will end up spending my money on that. And I was like, ah, it's not really helping me save money. And when I only spend, you know, somewhere between a hundred to $150 a month on groceries, I would, you know, and I got to come up with $375 for the crown on my tooth. I'm like, um, I would have to go like, six weeks just to and not spend any of my money on any kind of food or substitutions for food or anything else like that for <laughs> six weeks in order to come up with that kind of money. Um, so, I mean, it's helpful and I, I, and I'm, I need to be grateful for the money. I am grateful for the, what they're willing to offer to help me to do so that I can get a crown on my tooth. It's just, I stress too much because like I said, I want to be able to pay for a writing conference in September. I want to be able to buy my books when it gets published, my book when it gets published. I want to be able to get copies to do a book signing. And I just, I don't see myself being able to have that money right now because I have this problem with my tooth, um, which is a whole nother problem that I've had for years that I just can't afford to fix. Um, and so it's causing more problems with my teeth that I, it's just costing me more money <laughs> because I haven't spent the money to fix it. So it's, it's an ongoing financial issue and it's just stressing me out. And Friday, I will be honest, I did made the worst possible decision. I, I mean, I already put that money on my credit card on Monday, which I didn't want to do. And then Friday I was like, fine, I was tired and I was hungry and I didn't have any food and I wasn't getting a response back for anything. And I was like, okay, I'm just waiting and waiting. And so then I decided I needed food because I hadn't eaten and I didn't want to do dishes and I didn't want to make anything. So I ordered pizza and I tried to order it without cheese and all of that stuff, but it all came with cheese. It all came with something and it wasn't like cooked all the way through and it was doughy and it just seriously upset my stomach. <laughs> and I was like, that was a total waste of my money. And I put it on my credit card because I didn't want to spend the money. I could would have been better off going grocery shopping. Um, so I was just really, again, annoyed with myself. And I do that when I get really emotional, I get really depressed and I shut down. I don't eat, I don't take care of myself. And then I get really hungry and I still just don't want to get up and eat and do anything. So I spend money I don't have. So it's a very vicious cycle for me. And then of course, that vicious reminder that I can't eat foods like that because that's why I don't go out to eat because I don't know what they put in that stuff or I can't special order it the way that I need to. And it just really, it upsets my stomach. So that I've just not been feeling very good all weekend because I ate a whole bunch of, because I mean, I ordered it so that I'm, made myself eat it all, which was really bad too. So it took me three days to eat it all, but, um, not good, not good at all. So, um, I just have to just be honest and be like, this is where I'm at right now. And just stressing and of course, stressing over things I have no control over 
and stressing over things that haven't even happened yet. Like they haven't even opened up the time for the conference. They haven't even opened up anything else. And I did, however, I did go online and I did look at, um, I do some online surveys and I did look at that and I've done a whole bunch of them and I just haven't redeemed any of them. So I get, I can either buy prizes, get redeemed prizes with the points that I get, or I can get cash. So they'll send me checks. So I actually have like $175 worth of points that I could get. So I actually ordered them to send me the $175, which will take two to four weeks. But I'm like, hey, that's $175. I could do a lot with $175. So there are other places and forms and ways that I can get money. So I know that God is helping me out financially. And he is reminding me that I do have other options and other things and that I do have like $300 in my savings. I just wanted to use it for other things. So it's not like I don't have some options that I don't have some money. It's just that I have other expenses coming up. Like I know I need to get blood work done for my doctor's appointment in May. I know I have a doctor's appointment coming up in May that I'm going to have to pay for. So I was holding on to that money for those things. I was holding on to it for the writing com conference. I was holding on to it for, you know, getting hard copies of my book when it gets published. So I had that money earmarked for something else. So I'm just kind of annoyed that now I have to spend it on my tooth that I have to figure out how to save up the money or come up with the money for all the other stuff that I wanted to do. So, um, but I think it's another reason that God is trying to teach me that I have to trust him and that I have to deal with what's going on right now. And it's nice to plan for the future, but I can't always guarantee what that future is going to be. And I can't give up on my goals or my dreams because things aren't happening the way I want them to right now, because I don't know what my financial situation is going to be or how it's going to work out in next month or next week or even, you know, come August when my book comes out or September when the writing conference com rolls around. I have no idea. So I have lots of other options and things to do and to work on. And I just haven't employed any of those because I get fixated on this is how I want things to work and it's not working that way. And I think God is trying to remind me that I have other options and other things that I can do and that it will be okay and that I can figure out how to do all of this and it will work out and that God has a plan and he's taking care of me. And so maybe this is just a test of faith and it will get better. But anyway, this is just kind of where I'm at right now and trying to remember to be grateful for what I am being offered and for the help that I am receiving and grateful for the options that I do have out there. And even if it's not what I want, it's definitely getting me what I need. And that is the thing that I need to remember that I have what I need and that that's enough. It may not be everything I want and it may not be how I want it, but it's enough. And I am grateful to God for reminding me of that. And I'm grateful that I can still smile and be happy and know that I can get through this and that it's going to be okay. And I'm not giving up, shutting down a little bit, having to push through that, hitting that brick wall that I really don't like. And it's really hard to get through that, but um, not giving up on myself, not giving up on my goals and striving to push through. So that is where I'm at for today. And just thank you for watching my videos. And if you like these videos, you can hit like, subscribe, share with someone else if you think they'll like it too. And I hope you have a great week full of gratitude and find ways to live a happy and healthy lifestyle too.